Doctor, what is degenerative disc disease in a layman's language? So before uh, actually going on to explain what is uh, degenerative disc disease, one should know about what is a normal disc, mm -hmm. what is a disc. So if you look at the spine, so this is the structure of the spine in uh, profile and you look at these bones, these, we call these things as vertebral bodies. So between two bones, there is a soft cushion like structure. So that is the disc. So it acts like a shock absorber between the two bones and the other important uh, uh, role it plays is it gives shape to the spinal column. So it acts as a shock absorber and it gives gives shape to the spinal column. So this is the disc. So what can happen is it can degenerate or what we call uh, it, it can wear out. So that is called degenerative disc disease. So what is degenerative disc disease? If you look at the structure of the disc, so if you cut it, slice, slice through the disc, it has two layers. So the outer layer and the inner core. Outer layer is called annulus fibrosus. The inner core, it's a jelly-like structure that is called nucleus. And if you look at the composition of the nucleus, 70% of nucleus is constituted by water. So this is the one which gives kind of hydrostatic pressure to the disc. So once there is loss of water content from the nucleus, then we call degenerative disc disease. It's essentially loss of water from the disc. What causes degeneration of a disc? If you look into the causes of disc degeneration, frankly saying, we do not know what exactly causes degenerative disc disease. Mm. But, so there are uh, some causes which might lead to degeneration of the disc. So one such one is smoking. So the incidence of degenerative disc disease is more in smokers compared to non-smokers. So smoking could be one of the leading factors for degeneration of the disc. Okay. And now, the currently the researchers are, are saying there is a genetic predisposition for uh, degenerative disc disease. Mm. So that means you are kind of genetically predetermined to develop degenerative di disc disease, thereby low back pain and neck pain. They have actually identified a gene responsible for degeneration of the disc on chromosome 21. Mm. That is second cause, genetic predisposition and the first one is smoking. And the other thing could be an injury to the lower back. Mm. Say for example, if you repeatedly twist and turn your lower back, what it can lead to, what it can cause is, it can lead to a break in the outer layer of the disc, that is the annulus what we call an annular tear. Mm. So that can lead to a degeneration of the disc. Okay. So that is the reason we suggest not to frequently twist and turn the lower back. So these probably are the causes for uh, a degeneration, degenerative disc disease. One is smoking, second one is genetic pre predisposition. Repeated twisting and turning of the lower back can lead to degeneration of the disc. Doctor, is it true that in case of some individuals, the nerve endings penetrate the outer layers of the disc, making them sites of pain? It's actually true. What happens in uh, degenerative disc disease, normally if you look into the structure of the disc, it, it has an outer layer and an inner layer. The outer layer is called the annulus. So the disc doesn't have nerve supply and it doesn't have blood supply. And the degenerative disc disease, as I mentioned before, it starts with a small tear in the outer layer, that is small tear in the annulus. So once there is a small tear, through that tear, there will be ingrowth of small nerve endings mm. into the annulus and there, there will be ingrowth of blood vessels also. Normally, the disc doesn't have the blood supply, it doesn't have the nerve supply. So because of this tear, these nerve endings, they tend to grow through the tear into the disc and these are nerve endings what we call bare nerve endings it doesn't they these nerve endings they, they do not have any insulation around that so these are bare nerve endings so these bare nerve endings are very sensitive to stretch so even a small pressure on the disc can cause low back pain this is the proposed mechanism for low back pain in degenerative disc disease Chronic back pain, pain in the thighs, and weakness of the legs can be some of the symptoms. Can the pain radiate to places like shoulders, hands, and arms? 
so degenerative disc disease it can be there in the neck it can be there in the low back so if there is a degeneration of the disc in lower back patients develop only low back pain and the pain can radiate down into the buttocks can radiate down into the thighs and legs and sometimes when there is extensive pressure on the nerves there can be weakness of the muscles also in the leg like say for example if there is a degenerative disc disease of l4 l5 disc it can press on l5 nerve root and it can cause weakness of the dorsiflexion of the foot that means the patients cannot do um, back movement of the foot so but if you have back problem that means degenerative disc disease in the low back the pain can never radiate into the shoulders and arms so only the back degenerative disc disease in the low back can cause pain in the back can cause pain in the lower limbs buttocks thighs and legs but if there is degenerative disc disease in the neck that can lead to pain radiating into the shoulders radiating into the interscapular area that is the area between the sh two shoulder blades the pain can radiate into the shoulders arms forearms and hand so, but there is no relationship between degenerative disc disease of the low back and the pain of the shoulders and uh, the neck doctor what are the non invasive modalities of ddd so once we make a diagnosis of uh, degenerative disc disease we don't rush in for surgery so we subject the patient to what we call conservative treatment or non invasive treatment this conservative treatment includes usage of pain medication either non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs or opioids along with some sort of physiotherapy so the medication plus physiotherapy constitute what we call conservative treatment or non invasive treatment in a degenerative disc disease and this physiotherapy we divide physiotherapy into two parts one is electrotherapy second one is proper physical exercises so electrotherapy is some sort of heat treatment given to the low back and the legs to relieve the pain so this can be in the form of what we call short wave diathermy and interferential therapy these are the treatment modalities we give in electrotherapy and the second modality in physiotherapy is physical exercises these physical exercises are aimed at strengthening the low back muscles the muscles in the buttock the muscles in the thigh and uh, muscles in the lower abdomen so we suggest exercises for the patient to strengthen all these uh, muscle groups so this constitutes non invasive treatment and the other important aspect is what we call activity modification activity modification is say for example some activity is giving pain to the patient say if the patient is getting pain while bending forward so we try to ad advise the patient to avoid that bending movement that means any activity which produces pain is to be avoided so this is the non invasive treatment one is activity modification pain medication to relieve the pain and the physical ex physiotherapy which includes electrotherapy and physical exercises if non invasive treatment doesn't work what do you do do you go for surgery straight away we have that you give different injections before going for surgery what are these injections yeah it's true that we try out uh, different injections before uh, going for surgery so if the non invasive treatment doesn't work so how long I mean are you going to wait for surgery thing is we try out uh, non invasive treatment for a period of 6 to 8 weeks then if the patient is not responding say if he has persistent pain then we propose different injections so there are different types of injections we give based on the patient's condition the most important and the most common one which we give is called an epidural steroid injection epidural steroid injection is the one where if you look at the spine so this is actually the back of the spine so what we do here we just give an injection you see this uh, yellow one here so that is the spinal cord we just give an injection just outside the spinal cord 
so that is an epidural steroid injection what it does is this steroid injection it goes inside and this steroid reduces what we call perineural inflammation what happens once there is compression on the nerve there is 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 there is